gentlemen, I'm YouTube as Gamers and Hobbyists and welcome to this week's episode of P&Q, the question and answer series where you ask me questions or put comments to me and then I respond the following week. Now you can do this one of four ways, you can pop your comment or questions down below and I'll answer you obviously or if you want an anonymous response you can email me directly at miniwarzone at gmail.com, there'll be a link in the video description below, so check that out. Or if you make a video or a video series yourself and ask a question there or talk about a topic and it's it's one I want to respond to, that'll be answered here. Or if we meet in person and we talk about stuff and I want to respond or bring it up as a topic here, I will do that as well. So that's the full way. So that's the, the preamble out of the way. Um, right, so this week I've got one, two, three video questions, one email and then the rest of the comments left on the video from last week. So, let's start with the video questions. Okay, got a cup of coffee. I feel like I need it to, to kind of fuel myself. <laughs> Getting dark outside already, and that's craziness. Um, due to certain circumstances, I'm having to record this on the oh, uh, Sunday today, so this will go up tomorrow, uh, Monday for you guys. But the first video question comes from Kuja and Kiwi on the Hira Hobby Sunday. <coughs> it says, if you had to choose between a Xenos Knight and an Imperial Knight, which would you choose and why? Depends what I'm choosing for. What, to fight each other? Who would win? Which I would rather be? Which I'd rather own? <coughs> Depends on who it is. If it's, if it's versus, like in a, in a combative uh, scenario, then it depends which one. Um, for two, I'd rather be, I'd rather be an Imperial Knight, or I'd rather be, you know, um, playing an Imperial Knight. Um, yeah, which one I'd rather own at the moment? A Xenos Knight, so I've got an Imperial Knight. So, yes, so hopefully that answers that question. Thank you for that, for putting that one up, that's uh, interesting. Next video question comes from Black Country Wargamer, and is Ask My Audience. Now this time, um, as it's his last one of the year, he's asked four questions? Yeah, three, four, no, four questions. <coughs> kind of keeps going, I'm going to answer them all here. <coughs> it says, how large <coughs> is your watch list on YouTube? How large is my watch list on YouTube? Well, that's the first question. Well, <coughs> my answer's probably going to stun the people. It certainly shocked my daughter. I don't bother with it. I don't bother with a watch list. Never have done, never will do. I'm quite happy. Plodding along the way I'm going. Um, you know, if I want to watch YouTube, and I, I allotted myself, uh, you know, time to watch it. Like, you know, oh, I've got another uh, couple of hours to kill. I'm going to watch YouTube. I'll watch the videos then. If I if I get recommended videos then I think, oh, I might watch that, but I haven't got time yet. I know I'll get recommended them the next time I go on, and that's that's just the way it is. So I don't I don't actually bother with it, believe it or not. Okay, number two says, how often do you clean up your subscription list for channels? Uh, how often do you clean up your subscription list for channels you just don't watch anymore? I suppose about. Every three or four months, maybe. Although I have got a couple of channels on there which I, I just refuse to unsubscribe to. <laughs> Even though they haven't put uh, content up for years, just because I'm hoping that they will, I suppose. I don't know. And it's quite possible they might have passed away. Um, but there's been no activity for a very long time on some of um, so a couple of times uh, a year, I suppose, every three or four months, uh, maybe maybe three times a year, I suppose it works out roughly, it varies. Okay, number three, have you ever met a YouTuber you're sub to? Many, many times, yes indeed, yes I have. Um, I've met loads, I've met the Terrain Tutor, I've met Cruise the Silicus, um... British Legion, Andy Tudy Six, yeah, the list goes on. 
What is the most beneficial piece of equipment you should get for your channel? Or if you haven't got a channel, what do you think I need? Um, beneficial piece of equipment you need to get for your channel, for me. Hmm, that's a tricky one. I I did think about getting some better lighting back along. But that's on the back burner for now. I suppose the next piece of equipment beneficial would be a camera, a handheld camera stabiliser. That would probably be the next beneficial piece of equipment for me. A, a camera stabiliser so it's not so shaky. Even with the st you know the stability mode on it can still be a bit a bit uh, shaky there like you're in an earthquake situation. But uh, um, what do I think you need? I wouldn't like to say. I, I couldn't speak for you. It's your channel, your style. You know, you know what you need, I guess. So I wouldn't like to comment on that. That's a great set of questions, though. I enjoyed thinking about those. Hmm. Right, the next video question comes from Tabletop Minions. <coughs> And he put a video out about gaming surfaces and asking, what type of gaming surface is right for you? <clears throat> well, I like them all. <clears throat> I I have them all. I have the hard surface, the, like the sand and grit and PVA and all that. I have the mats, I have the felt, I have the Realm of Battle board. It depends. It depends what mood I'm in, I think. <clears throat> I mean, they've all got their pros and cons, but taking all that into consideration, I, I don't know. I mean, if I had more space, I suppose I'd have a table set up all the time, permanently, and then another table either in and out of being set up. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've got a table set up. Uh, well, it's not, the table's out, but it's not got the, the playing surfaces on that at the moment, but... Um, so the, the playing area is used up, but if I had like two playing areas, I'd have one set up uh, with all the scenery and everything on it straight away. I love the Realm of Battle board, I do love it. Although it's hollow and, you know, it's quite noisy when you roll your dice and it's noisy on the hard um, boards as well. But I like that, I quite like that, it's quite satisfying. Uh, it is nice to have that quiet clunk of the dice on a mat. But I suppose all told, when I roll dice, my preferred method is rolling into a dice tray overall. So that it doesn't really matter what gaming surface I'm playing on for the dice rolling side of it. As far as miniatures go, um, <clears throat> I've got no, no problems with <clears throat> moving them around on any surface to be honest. Um, storage is a, a thing. <coughs> the hard, the hard table which I've got is it's like um, I've got the six by four. And it's cut down the middle. And it's folds into, you know, um, so it folds into a three by four, um, which I turn on the side and just stack against the wall. And then of course the realm of battle board um, has to get packed away into the, that carry case. Uh, so I suppose the mats are best for storage. Um, I like the look of the Realm of Battle board best of all. Um, I like the mats for... I don't know, there's something about mats. You can glide your figures across. You can just like push them along a group of them if needs be. <laughs> but you can't really do that on the other surfaces. But yeah, I... So what type of game surface is right for me? Uncle Atom, it depends what mood I'm in and what game I'm playing. Let's leave it at that. So thank you for that question or that topic. Got an email. So that's all the video questions. Email now. Okay, it says, with the season of goodwill almost upon us, will you be doing any festive modelling in the near future? But if you mean, am I going to be doing anything like um, painting up a Santa Claus or anything like that? No. Ah, I did last year, didn't I? I did that sleigh. Probably the most festive I'm going to get is using this stuff. Yeah? Snow spray. 
I went. I, I picked up some. Upstairs, and I've got a four cans of snow spray. This, this stuff. I'm just going to try out for terrain. Um, so it's great for spraying trees and plants. Ideal for decorating glass and mirrors. Can be used with stencils. So I'm going to. Because it can be used with glass. So I'm just going to have a quick. That comes out. That's not bad. Not bad. Give you a quick. Uh, Not the best lighting, but it comes out all right, you know. Comes out all right. <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll let that dry and see how then later on see how easy it is to clean up. Because <clears throat> I think that's that's the most um, festive I'm going to be getting. <clears throat> I'm going to be putting it onto some scenery. It seems to come off really easy actually. Yeah, I can wipe it off with my fingers now. But I'll let it dry and see how hard, difficult it is then. Looks quite good. I could I could dust some trees with that. Some might put some on my diorama. Maybe. Maybe he says. So we'll see. <clears throat> but that's the only festive thing I'll be doing in regards to hobby. <clears throat> okay. So that's all that. So now I'm left with the comments from last week. First one comes from Basic Miniature Painting. Says so cool, P and Q Pete. I have a question. What's in the tubes behind your shoulder? Also, mate, just shared it on the Warhammer Forty K group on Facebook. Thank you very much, sir. I do really appreciate that. If anybody shares my video as much as possible, then then that gets a big thumbs up from me. Thank you very much. Right. <clears throat> What's in the tubes? They are gaming mats. Pure and simple gaming mats. All different ones. From like Batman ones to snow ones to um, you know alien planet ones, cracked earth, you know all that kind of thing. Like to um, like Chaos World, they're all there. So I've got a few, a few gaming mats. <coughs> so that's what's in the tubes. The next page, right? William Kuby says, yippee, he got it. And to all out there, what do you think will win? I can't even remember the question. But if anyone can, maybe they can answer you. <laughs> See vid post thoughts here that all out there, or red, green, 09 or so, we'll see. Um, yep, okay. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but okay. Um, but you obviously asked who would win, so I think you said something like who would win out of a space marine. What was it? A space marine versus something? I can't remember now. Can't remember. But I did answer, I know I did. Right, Frost and Fists, so it says, great episode, my awesome brother, keep up the great work. Thank you, Wolf Brother Mephos. Always means a lot that you watch, that's cool. Thank you very much indeed. <clears throat> Black Hawk Tabletop Gaming it says, thanks for answering the question, Pete. Here's another one for you. In all of, D of the D&D &D versions, what is your favourite monster and why? I think for me it's got to be the Beholder because it was, I mean up until that point it was like your traditional dragon and the Tiamat with the five heads uh, but I think it's got to be you know these these guys now and um, because each tentacle you know he's able to cast different magic with it and they, I found the Beholder terrifying. And I remember playing Eye of the Beholder on the Amiga, Commodore Amiga, when I was a kid. Uh, well, when I was younger. <clears throat> and um, I just thought it was brilliant when you actually met the Beholder. But he was so hard to kill, he really was. Um, yeah. So I was going to say Beholder. Uh, originally, just the original Dragon. And Tiamat in particular. But after that, um, the Beholder. Thank you for your question. 
good one. Alright, Atomic Dog Scale Model Freak says, Nice P&Q Pete, will you build and paint a bigger model, such as a 1 6 or a 1 12th scale in the near future? Just curious, keep up the great videos, take care. Not the near future, but never say never, that's what I say. Uh, depends on what it is, because obviously some would be too big in that scale. Depends what it is. Never say never. Um, so that is that is a possibility that I would do a bigger scale model, probably a bust or something like that. I, I don't know. We'll have to see. See what the new year brings. And last but not least, uh, Nick from Nick Beer Forty K says, "Nice one, Pete. What is your favourite box of chocolates? Favourite box of chocolates." Hmm, I think I'm going to have to plumb for milk tray. Milk tray chocolates. Do you remember, is anybody out there old enough to remember the old adverts? Uh, where the guy left a little calling card. He'd like, I don't know, uh, ski down a mountain, jump on a, uh, like a cable car, freight uh, wire, and sort of race down, go burst through a window deliver the chocolates, put his calling card on top. All because the lady loves milk tray. And I thought that was a brilliant advert. Um, but the chocolates are nice. Um, I quite like black magic, but I'm not a huge fan of dark chocolate, I've got to say. But I don't mind it. It's, uh, it's quite cool. Yeah. So yeah, milk tray. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I did start watching um, um, Star Trek Discovery, is it? I know that's not relevant to your question here now, but I, if I didn't mention it before, I'll, I'll mention it now. I, I started watching it. Yeah, it's good. It is good. It's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> anyway, that's it for the questions. Thank you very much for watching Remember All Brushes Lead to War. Please like this video if you liked it, um, <coughs> and share if you can, and um, if you didn't like it, bugger off. But other than that, thank you very much for watching, it means so much. I love each and every one of my subscribers and I love interacting with you. It is still my favourite series to make, these PQs. because I love the... Uh, the the relationship I, I build up and it, it becomes unique for a period and then the audience changes. I just love all that. Um, but yeah, keep them coming guys. Nearly Christmas and then you've got New Year with lots of new, new ideas, new hopes, new projects, all that stuff. So all brushes lead to war. I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.